so event exactly the thing which we are aware of right so say in our organization if some event is occurring right some kind of event is happening similarly if you just compare the same thing here technically in ibm bpm event is something uh, due to the occurrence of something an event occurs basically say for example we have designed so many processes till now right and we always start it with a start event so what will the start event do the start event will start the process right so it is doing something it is creating something and as a result of that maybe some process is getting triggered some message or some information is being shared okay so these are the different implementations of events different uh, way of implementing events in ibm bpm i'll give you example say we have already discussed one of the events in while uh, implementing coach we have something called button right and we know whenever we click on a button it tends to come out of the coach and goes to the next component right this is also a kind of event we discussed right right what is that event called it is boundary event right similarly if i come to uh, the event implementations the different types of event like start event end event whenever some token is reaching the end event the process is ending so which means whenever some event is triggered there is some execution which is happening at the back end which is causing to end the process right similarly start message event is also doing the same thing it is starting the process due to the start event has been triggered right now you see this process which is uh, right now open and so krishna raj what you need to do you can click on the start event yeah and if you can go to implementation and if you just uh, yes move it up right if you if you can click on the drop down yes and please select the first one none yes so whenever we create a process guys this is how the process looks like we have a start event we have uh, mm -hmm. then some activity and we can add more activities over here we have seen that earlier we can have more uh, lanes right we can have gateways and then finally when the process needs to end we should have an end event now the thing is there are different types of start event so we are going to understand all these different types of start event what are they basically and how they can be implemented and which of them we use more in the industry and why it is used we will we will discuss all those things today okay so please select the start event and then after selecting you can go to the implementation and please show the audience the drop down what we have over here yes so we have this different types of start events none message scar service ecm content and document most of them are not being used but there are very very important thing which we use over here one of them is the first one that is a none start event it is a simple start event which starts the process it doesn't need any information from some other process to start this okay whenever you have a none start event i can manually trigger the process from the top right corner from the designer and we have seen this earlier also i can also trigger this process by using different form like a uh, startable service i can have where i can execute uh, my code say start process by name i can have some ajax service which can trigger this process going ahead we'll also see how we can trigger a process through a web service web service can also trigger this similarly through event also this process can be triggered okay so what is that event let's see if you can click on the drop down again the different types of start event yes the second option says message very very important the most important thing over here okay whatever you see in the drop down this is something we use in the industry a lot okay we call this as start message event 
the first one was start event the simple start event or none start event the second one is start message event now what is a message message is that piece of information that this process needs to trigger itself okay now this message is something which can be passed between two different processes or if we have some service from that service also i can pass some message to this process even through some external application also i can share some message but that could be a different implementation but that also can be done now guys don't get confused with this term message message is simple it's an information now information what we have seen before information it takes the form of variables right so in ibm bpm or in any technology information it takes the form of a variable so in a variable we can store that information and now this variable can be a simple variable it can also be a complex variable simple variable means it can be string it can be integer it can be some decimal it can be some boolean and what is complex variable business object i can use a business object also to pass a message between different processes now coming back to our start message event what it does start message event will start this process whenever some information is being received at this start message event what is the limitation limitation is none start event which we have seen before we can manually trigger this process at any any point of time right i want to see how this process is getting triggered as a developer i can do the testing by just simply clicking on the top right corner run button and i can create an instance and i can see the progress of the of this entire workflow but unfortunately if you use the start message event we cannot use the top right corner run button to manually trigger this process it can never be done only if some message is uh, being captured at the start message event then only this process will be triggered how it will be captured how the message will be passed everything will discuss okay just understand the terms over here and at any point of time guys if you face any doubt if there is any doubt or concern stop me there and ask me questions okay this is a very important topic so till now are we good any questions no rahul no rahul okay okay now coming to the next option ska service now ska service guys ska is something which is related to integration designer if you remember right at the beginning of our session when we started discussing on the architecture right that time i had discussed about a tool called ibm integration designer and i gave you some information some overview of that tool ibm integration designer it is used to integrate multiple systems together right say i am working we all are working say on a project and say this bpm project alone bpm cannot do everything so we might need some different technologies say we need java we need say another ui technology say angular js is there right say we have the database right so all the systems needs to communicate together then only the entire application will run properly right now in that case we use an iid and in iid there is a component called ska service okay what this ska service basically does it is used to pass some information between say different applications so there is one application in ibm bpm there is one application uh, which is there in say java and now ibm bpm it needs to pass some information to the java service right now the problem is java service will not understand what is a business object 
it does not understand it only understands its own object right similarly ibm bpm will not understand the object of java right because both are different technology so there must be some medium which will convert or transform the business object into a java object and vice versa a java object into a business object and who does this ska service okay so there are many components in iid so we are just discussing on one component ska service now coming to this implementation coming to the start ska service event what it will do say i have a java service i'm just giving one example say i have a java service which will pass some information to this bpm process which we are seeing right now on the screen and we have a start ska service event right now whenever that information is being passed from the java service to this process that is the event process and we have configured say start ska service whenever that information reaches over here at this point then only this process will be triggered otherwise we cannot trigger this process manually again the same thing so you can understand the difference between none start event that is the first one which we were using till now and then coming to the start message event and start ska service event both work similar way whenever some information is received then only the process will be triggered otherwise the process will never be triggered i cannot manually run this process i cannot use start process by name to trigger this process i cannot do all these things only in case a ska service passes some information to bpm to this process and whenever this start ska service event receives that information from that ska service then only this process will be triggered now coming to the industrial implementation do we really implement uh, start ska service event uh, till now i haven't seen people using this but yes it is always good to know so if you have any iid if if any one of you knows iid so definitely we can implement a ska service and through that we can pass some information and see how this process can be triggered okay now moving ahead ecm content now ecm content the what is the full form of ecm it is enterprise content management now content management or enterprise content management is related to document management system in bpm technology okay now there are different ways okay first understand what is a document i hope we all know what is a document i'll i'll give an example say uh, there is a ui okay there is some external ui or maybe there is an ui which is made up of say bpm we have some bpm coach and there uh, we have a coach view uh, which is used to say upload some document right we can have some coach like that where some maybe some customer documents will be uploaded right now whenever those documents are uploaded i need to store those documents somewhere right either maybe i will store it some in some external application or maybe there will be some internal application where i can store all the documents i'll give one example filenet i don't know how much uh, how many of you have heard of this uh, technology filenet filenet is a repository where you can store the documents now see in case of simple information say employee name employee address all these things whatever the employee is filling up in the application form we can store all these things where we can store it in, in database right so after whatever the employee is filling up we can uh, whenever we are trying to submit the application we store all the information into a database table but where we can store the documents say the customer is also uploading uh, his pan card details his aadhar card details and passport and all these things where do i need to store the document document cannot be stored in the database so there is some repository where we can store this document so filenet is one of the repository where we can store some document now filenet is not an ibm tool it is an external tool 
okay now the question is how a document is stored say i have uploaded a pdf file now how that pdf file gets stored the pdf file whenever we are uploading it we convert that pdf file into some base 64 data okay we convert it similarly i was just giving an example yesterday to someone whatsapp right whatsapp has this encryption technique what does it do you know that we whenever we are doing some chats and everything every day or maybe monthly we can configure backup right so what that backup happens does our chat get stored into some database yes it gets stored into some database whatsapp there is some database you see which gets created in everyone's mobile phone and all the chats are stored over there but if someone wants to read that chat they can never read the chat say by going into the database and maybe trying to open that file nobody can open it why because it is in encrypted format whenever i again try to get the chat from that backup it gets converted into the chat format which we can read and then only we can read those chats whatever we have done the backup similarly in case of document also whenever we are storing the document somewhere in say file net it never gets stored in the form of pdf it gets converted into base 64 so that say if someone has access to that file net he cannot access that document like that one second that base 64 needs to be converted into a document format and we can display the document in say bpm okay so ecm content or enterprise content uh, management so this is one of the uh, components that are that is used in ibm bpm also and through this we can say we can uh, store the document we can display the document we can upload a document everything we can do in ibm bpm now going into deep into documents now whenever a user uploads a document and the document is getting stored into the file net repository there are different document fields or there are different properties of the document that gets created i'll give you example say document name document title uploaded by uploaded time all these are the different document properties and one of the property that document that file net creates which is very important that is called document id right whenever we are triggering a process we have some instance id right so that's an identifier similarly here for document also there is something called document id which also gets created whenever you are uploading some document now what will happen now coming back to the start ecm content event now we understood at least the basic concepts of documents now what is the start ecm content event what it will do whenever some document is received at this point then only it will trigger this process say i have another process say i have process 1 i have process 2 process 1 will say upload a document and process 2 whenever it receives some document id then only it will trigger this process in that scenario we can implement start ecm content event okay i'll forward few documents on this uh, there are very good documents so basically it says that start a process whenever some enterprise content management event is received whenever some document is received then only we are triggering this process otherwise we are not triggering this process again limitation you can understand we cannot manually run this process it will need some information then only it will trigger this process automatically all right any questions guys till now on any of those no no rahul no rahul
next we come to document this is also similar to what we discussed previously again it is also related to the content management okay but yes there is some difference so it says starts a process when a new document is created and then only this process will be launched whenever some existing document is created or whenever some uh, whenever some existing document is uh, there in some ecm content management system say i'll give an example let me uh, give an example then you will understand say i have the filenet repository where i have multiple documents over there say i have the pan card of a customer i have the aadhar card of the customer i have the passport details of the customer stored in some external repository or maybe some bpm uh, document repository so bpm also has its own repository okay like we use filenet i am talking more about filenet because i have used filenet before but there is also bpm document repository is also there which ibm bpm manages there also we can store the document okay now in case of document what happens say we have say three four documents over there right now each document will have some property each document will have some property say document id document title like this now whenever some property of a document is received over here say i am passing document id say i have a service in ibm bpm say i have a service flow and that service flow is reading the document whatever is getting uploaded whenever aadhar card is being uploaded in the say filenet repository or bpm document repository that document id is being passed over here in this process whenever the start document event will receive the document id then only it will move forward why it will move forward it will move forward with a motive that i am going to pass this document id i have received the document id in this process using start document event and i am passing the document id to the next activity say this we have a user task over here and through this activity i am going to show the document to the end user okay i am getting the document id i am passing the document id to the next activity and using the document id i can view or i can show the document to the end user how it can be shown we will discuss on that in in a very brief way but this start document event is again uh, similar to my start ecm content not exactly similar here we whenever we receive some document property then only we trigger the process but how it is similar again the same thing if i implement start document event i cannot trigger this process manually start process by name api will not work only in case some document id is received then only this process will trigger itself now coming to the implementation or coming to this discussion how a document is viewed okay how a document can be viewed uh through some activity so basically when we are we are creating some human service we add some codes right now there is a toolkit called content management in ibm bpm and over there we have a service and that service is a is a bpm service internal bpm service is there like what is an internal bpm service we have seen some internal services before like we went to the type ahead implementation and there we saw some dummy service attached right and we created the service with the same signature of the dummy service similarly here also there is some dummy service provided which we can reuse which we can use it directly we, we do not have to again create a new one but we can use that directly and whenever we are using that service we need to pass document id and server so if you are using filenet or if you are using some bpm internal uh, document repository you have to configure the server of that filenet or the document repository and where do we need to configure we need to configure that through some environment variable so you just have to pass that environment variable value that server name and the document id to the service and that doc that service will internally will call the document from the repository and will display that 
to the end user. It's a very simple implementation. I'll try to get the infrastructure. I cannot promise because I don't have the infrastructure of document. So if I get the infrastructure, then definitely I'll show it to you. Else I'll forward few documents. There are few documents where uh, uh, there's very good information on document management system of uh, IBM BPM. So I will forward those. And if you guys in future uh, work on FileNet, so there are a few documents on FileNet also that also I'll share. Okay. So now coming to the use of ECM content, uh, start ECM content event and start document event in IBM BP. Honestly, these two things are not used. I have never seen any project where they are using the start ECM content event or start document event, because you know what will happen whenever you are using these things like SCAR service or ECM content or document, these are something where you're creating more dependency on some external system. Say if finite does not work sometime, if finite is not able to share the document ID, then this process will never be triggered. So there are other ways where we can get a document ID and we can still trigger this process. Okay. So what is that example? Again, start message event. Through a start message event, I can get a document ID from some process and I can pass it to this process so that this process can be triggered. Our main focus on going ahead, if you see the course curriculum, our main focus would be message. This is something which we use in every process. Every process has some message implementation. Okay. But yes, other, other details also we are going to discuss the different other different types of start events we have discussed. Similarly, we'll discuss now on the different types of end message, uh, end events. Okay. So we are good with the start event. Yes, Rahul. Okay. Yes, so, Rahul. If we are good, then my question to Parvez. Parvez, what is message? A message is a event where um, a message is required in order to trigger it. Uh, for, for example, uh, from an another service, uh, we need a message. Sir. It can be a business object. It can be a variable. So it cannot be manually triggered. So it requires some message in order to get for the event to get triggered for the start event to get triggered. Yeah, that is that is correct. So message is not an event, but message is a piece of information, information. Uh, that we are using to trigger this process. Now we are seeing guys here start message event. There are other message event implementations also. Here, the start message event, what it will do whenever it receives some message, it will trigger this process. Okay. Right. So now we go to the end event. So Krishna Raj, if you can select the end event. No, it's already there in the process. Yes. Right. So like the different types of start events that we have seen, there are different types of end event also. Okay. Now the first one is very similar to what we have seen as none start event. This is a none end event and is the implementation that we are doing every time. Whenever we know that whenever the token will reach this uh, none end event, what it will do, it will end this process, right? We have already seen this before. Now, next we come to end message event. The next component. Uh, here in the drop down is in message event. Now, whenever the token will reach this end message event, this end message event will try to pass a message from this process to another process or maybe to some other service. So just understand the difference start message event. It is used to receive a message and end message event. It is used to pass a message to some other process, right? Very, very important. Okay. So in message event is used to pass some message 
to some other process or some service now here guys what again message is again the piece of information which we discussed it, it can be in the form of simple variable it can also be in the form of complex variable simple now we go to the next component error end event error end event now we have seen non end event similarly there is something called error end event whenever some error occurs now till now guys whatever we have seen we have designed so many processes we have designed leave application we have designed mobile application we have designed uh, loan application right now everywhere guys whatever design we have seen those are all the happy path right i'll, I'll make you understand what is in happy path say if you go back to a leave application the first component was start event then we had employee task then we had the manager task and then we had the end event right this is a happy path now if i add some exception path say whenever the employee task is triggered and whenever i went and tried to open the task whenever i tried to claim the task from the process portal i could not open the coach it failed maybe some code is there maybe i have written some code which is not correct maybe it's in that human service or maybe in that activity we are making some external call to some interface to get some data and that call failed all these things can happen right so what happens if that employee task will fail it will the instance will be in the fail state right now what if i need to capture the error right i am a developer i need to understand where the error is so i might have to implement something to capture the error to get the error right whether it's an interface call failure or whether it's some uh, maybe some code we have written which is faulty we can uh, we can always get the error details from there so for that i might add some exception path which will take me to the error end event instead of end event instead of going to the next component manager task in case of some failure of employee task i will not move forward instead i will take an exception path and move to the error end event and what this error end event will do this error end event will throw the error so that a developer so that i can understand where the error is and what is exactly the error so that i can go back and fix the code okay so this is my error end event we have an implementation on this separately we have a session on exception handling there we're going to discuss more on this i'll show you the implementation uh, because a lone error end event cannot do everything so there is one more component which we need to understand okay so we have session on this separately on exception handling over there we'll discuss coming to the last one terminate end event now this terminate end event is used as simple to terminate an instance whenever the token will reach this terminate end event what it will do it will terminate that instance okay there are different status of instance we have discussed right we have active we have uh, completed uh, we have uh, we have say failed we have suspended similarly we also have something called terminated right so whenever we terminate some instance and we have discussed this before from the process inspector we can terminate an instance right but if i want to implement some termination technique in my process i can use terminate end event yes uh, yes please select this terminate end event we'll discuss on this properties also now what happens if you terminate an instance whenever i'm terminating an instance the status gets changed to terminated and unfortunately i can never change the status of a terminated instance into an active once again i can never do that i can only delete an instance if i have terminated it so we have to implement a terminate end event very carefully okay i'll give an example of a real time implementation okay then you guys can relate remember we discussed about orphan tokens orphan tasks 
orphan instances right and okay can any one of you uh, tell me what is an orphan task nobody remembers the pending task that due date is got over right so it's a task say there is one task available and that task is available for a very long time say maybe 30 days 60 days 120 days 100 days have passed but nobody has worked on that task right and as a result if the task is active the instance will also be active now in in our implementations in bpm projects okay we have some implementation of sla okay now what is this sla i can implement my process in a way that if some instance is created and if that instance is active for more than 120 days or say if i have some specified time say if i have say after three months i need to terminate all the instances all those pending instances which are active more than say 120 days or 130 days so i can implement it in a way that if an instance is active for more than 120 days or 130 days i will go and terminate that instance so instead of manually doing that i can configure it in my process in a way that whenever my uh, whenever some instance is uh, active for more than say 120 days automatically what will happen some timer will trigger this event and will take it to the end terminate event and as a result which the instance was active it will be terminated now whenever you terminate some instance you see there are some properties which we can see below the first one is terminate entire process instance anyways it will terminate the entire instance so we always need to enable this the first one and second is delete all terminated instance runtime data now every instance will have some data we know that we create process variables which holds all the information and everything right but if i enable this option and whenever an instance is terminated whatever data that instance is holding everything will be deleted which means going forward if i need to recover the data of this instance i cannot recover it from anywhere okay so if i have to implement an end terminate event so we need to implement it very carefully only after understanding the requirement if there is actually any requirement where we need to implement termination there we can go and use this in many scenarios in many projects uh, i have seen before in case of uh, there are different types of errors that comes right there can be some syntax error syntax error is something which the coder has done Maybe I have written some code which is not correct. As a result, it is uh, failing, or it is uh, maybe the instances are failing because of that reason. So that I can go and rectify. But there are some uh, some errors which cannot be rectified. There can be some data issue, and even if say in IBM BPM I'm trying to inject the data, maybe through inspector or maybe through REST API, still the instance is not. Uh, we are not able to. You know what will do reactivate that instance once again it is in the failed state so we can implement our uh, code in a way that say if a failed instance is there in the server for more than say 120 days i am going to terminate that instance okay i can implement it with so through some coding i can do that easily okay so all these things can be implemented using an end terminate event very simple uh, it is not that complex it's very simple to implement all these different type of end events are very simple it is very easy to implement all these things okay so the different types of end event we are good any questions guys i am purposely not discussing the event properties of start message event and end message event because i'll be discussing on a story at the end so that's the reason i have not purposely discussed okay so we will be covering all those things so then
okay all right now we are good with start event we know what is start event start event is there always at the beginning of the process end event is there at the end of the process right now what in case i need some event in the middle of the process start event we always implement right at the beginning of the process you can see there is a first component of my process and end event i can implement right at the end of the process but in case if i need to implement some event implementation in between the process yes we have something called intermediate events i believe everybody is aware of the term intermediate intermediate is something which is included in the middle right so uh, krishna raj if you can drag this intermediate event in the middle at any at any point we'll discuss on the different types just yes okay that's it no need to connect anywhere yeah just keep it there yes right so now this is an intermediate event and like a start event like an end event intermediate events are also of different types okay there are different types of intermediate event let's see what are those different types of intermediate event so if you see right now in the drop down again we have a drop down here okay so here in this drop down we can see the first one says message receive we call this as intermediate message receiving event okay very 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 important message receiving event this intermediate message receiving event by the term you can understand it is used to receive a message as simple as that okay if i want to receive some information in the middle of the process i can use an intermediate receiving message event say i don't want to use a start message event start message event what it does whenever it receives some information it will trigger the process say i don't want to do this kind of implementation say i want to receive the information in the middle of the process then i can use start receiving message event and whenever the token will reach the start uh, whenever this token will reach the intermediate receiving message event then only it will get the information and after getting the information it will move ahead okay we'll see implementations of this uh, intermediate message receiving event okay and the second one the next one you see intermediate sending message event okay just the opposite if i want to pass some information from the middle of the process then i can use an intermediate sending message event so two types of intermediate messaging event one is receiving and other is sending through receiving i can receive some message and through sending i can send some message simple next we go to the next one scar service again the same thing we have seen what is start start scar service event it is used to receive the uh, that, that any information if you are trying to receive from some external application through some scar service whenever we receive the information uh, through the start scar service event it will trigger the process over here if i want to receive the similar information in the middle of the process then i will be using intermediate scar service event so basically the difference is mainly where i am receiving the information we previously we were seeing we were receiving the information right at the beginning of the process now i am receiving the same information in the middle of the process okay so my inter this intermediate scar service event will receive the information in the middle of the process and then only it will move ahead to the next component or next activity ecm content again the same thing we have seen starts ecm content event right and what we have learned whenever we receive some content whenever we receive a document then only we are triggering the process right now if i want to implement it in a way that in the middle of the process i want to receive some document whenever i receive the document then only i move forward to the next activity otherwise this 
intermediate ecm content event will wait till the time some document is received and then only it will move forward and just try to compare with the start event and this intermediate event start event what it does it will trigger the process whenever some document is received but if i don't want to implement this kind of requirement if i have a requirement that I want to receive the information or I want to receive the document in the middle of the process, then I should be using an intermediate ECM content event. Timer, very, very important. Again, again, something which we use a lot in the BPM project. Just before, just previously, I was uh, giving an example of terminate, right? I was talking about that I want to wait for 120 days and whenever that 120 days is reached, then only I'll move to the terminate end event. So timer is that component, guys, where I can define some time. And only when that time is reached, then only whatever sequence flow you connect from the timer to the next component, then that component will be triggered. Timer is where I can define some time. I can define some, say, I can define the time in minutes. I can define the time in hours. I can define it in the form of days. All these things I can define. And whenever the time is reached, then only it will, this timer will be triggered. And then the next component will also be triggered. We'll see implementation on the timer as well. Okay. So today is just the introductory session of these different types of events. Okay. So timer is one of them. Very, very important. Uh, in, in 80 to 90 percent of the projects, we use timers because we define SLAs uh, in, in, in the process. We have the due dates and everything. And nowadays, what we do for uh, doing some cleanup activity, we have to define some SLA by ourselves because we cannot keep an instance active for more than 120 days or 130 days in a server. So if an instance is active for so many days, it, it is clearly we can understand that nobody is using that instance nobody is working on that task right so we need to either complete that task and complete the instance or we can also terminate that instance after say 120 days how we can do it we can do it in the form of timer i can define a timer where i can define some time and whenever that time is reached then only the next component from the timer will be triggered okay now comes the last one tracking which you can see it is deprecated already but we'll still discuss something we have discussed already if you have if you uh, remember we discussed something called performance data warehouse database who can explain what is performance data warehouse db Swati, what is performance data warehouse TV? Where we can see uh, all the processes. Like no, what do we store in a performance data warehouse TV? What kind of information? Okay. So data guys, of processes, tasks, and the performance. Not really, but uh, close enough. So we store the task related information and instance related information in the BPM DB, that is the product database or the BPM database. In performance data warehouse DB, we store the performance information, the performance metrics. So what kind of performance metrics? We saw it clearly for uh, some reports, right? Process performance report, team performance report. And that time I had said you that whenever your process, whenever you're creating some process, whenever you are exposing the process to some team, what happens? Whatever performance metrics of that process, all those get stored in the database. What kind of performance metrics we have seen? Uh, say, I have a process leave application. 
so say how many times in the last one year this leave application process was triggered how many of them were completed on time how many of them were not completed on time how many are still active right how many are at risk we get some charts over there right based on some data we get some charts and those charts we can see where in the process portal right so here tracking is also related to something called performance db that we have and whenever you add a tracking event i mean this is not being used nowadays previously in the older version say 8.5 8.0 that time we used to use this component and this tracking event whenever you add this tracking event at anywhere in the process in the middle of the process then at that point of time whatever performance metrics are there all those get stored in the database okay so here uh, you see that whenever you select this tracking deprecated there is some event property and we have something called tracking group so you need to create some group you need to create something over here and that you need to map over here so if you can click on select krishna raj yes so what we see here we see some tracking group that can be created okay this some default tracking group is there and this tracking group this can be used to uh, if i log into the process portal over there i can see this tracking group and i can see all the different types of performance information over there this is not being used nowadays so let's not waste time over here we don't use this anymore so we can we can uh, just ignore this and we can move forward right so tracking regarding some tracking information i will uh, share some information with you with you guys but before we move ahead if you see right at the top there is a last tab which says tracking if you click on that right at the top we have the different headers overview definition variables folders views right at the top of the diagram we have variables right in the process yes similar to that we have tracking right now here if you see there is something called enable auto tracking yes now whenever you enable this what happens automatically whatever performance related information regarding this process uh, will be generated we don't have to write any code for this okay we don't have to write any code to get the performance details and everything but whatever performance that information is getting created for this process everything will be auto tracked and stored in the performance db warehouse okay now the thing is initially this auto tracking was always enabled but from the version 8.6 onwards there is a separate tab that they have added called tracking where we can enable it now why it is disabled from now nowadays because we have seen this at times if there is a complex process if i enable auto tracking the performance uh gets degraded somehow because what happens every time your performance db is trying to get some information from this process so we have seen this in case of complex process if i enable this auto tracking then in that case there can be some performance related issue maybe the process takes say maybe say uh, one hour to be completed maybe it is taking more than one hour okay so all this kind of things we have seen that's the reason what they have done they have added a separate tab now and over here we can enable the auto tracing auto tracking feature which is disabled from before but if you have a requirement then only you can go and enable it okay because there are projects where uh, you need to get the reports and everything right uh, especially banking projects or finance projects there uh, we need to get these different types of reports like team performance process performance so it is always good if you are using those uh, those reports to show your client because client might ask for those reports right so if you want to show those reports then definitely you have to come here and enable this auto tracking feature tracking will discuss more it is not part of event so let's concentrate on events we will have a session where we will discuss about this tracking again okay so like what is variable that can be tracked and all these things we will discuss later right so we are good with